It's a beautiful day outside. I don't know if you can hear it in my voice. I'm sure you can hear it in my voice. We're all sick. We got a cold. Not real bad, nothing crazy. Just a head cold. And as you might imagine, when you live on the homestead and there's a lot to do, uh, you can't really take a sick day if all you have is a head cold. So today, we gotta mow the field. This tractor behind me is what we're gonna use. We're gonna climb up there and start cutting. But before we do that, I have to figure out how to change to a new attachment. This here is the finish mower, and that over there is the brush hog. And up in the field, you don't wanna use a finish mower, you'll pop the belt. Uh, you can get a lot done a lot quicker and a lot better, more efficiently with the brush hog. That is if you can figure out how to change attachments, which is what I'm gonna do right now. All right, well that's not working. trying to disconnect the uh, the mower, the finish mower from the tractor. How do I take it off of the PTO? Okay, so lift up the metal. Where's that button? Okay, got, I feel a button. There we go. Yep, that did it. All right, thanks, Norm. Bye. When you don't know how to use something, just call somebody who does. It's a Mr. Rogers song for you right there. We have a quick disconnect attachment on this John Deere tractor, which is really cool. I'll show you how that works. All I gotta do is flip a couple levers on the side and then lower it from the inside and we're good to go. Those two levers right there, release it. Now I'm just gonna drop this down and pull away. Then I'll back up to the brush hawk. Whew. Everything's harder when you're sick. Almost forgot, before you start the tractor and go mow, you gotta check those fluids. Okay, all the fluids look good. Wanna make sure to check those every time. coming back.
the John Deere and we're mowing. You probably can't hear me very well. It's pretty loud when you're out here mowing. I usually wear my headphones, but I took them off to talk. This is a big field we have. It's 400 yards long. I don't know how many acres. I know yardage because there's a shooting range here. You might have noticed as I'm driving this, there's some blue poles with some little red things hanging off of them. I'll film the one when I drive by. Oh, that might help turn the air conditioner off. I'm not gonna turn it off very long, it's hot out today. Those are targets that we use. We have one every 100 yards and the little red things hanging off of them, when you hit it, they swing from side to side. So two shooters can actually do a duel and see who winds up with the most red targets on their side. Flipped. That's a lot of fun. on our side, maybe 200, uh, but total, it's a very big, big field. Here at the 400 yard mark, we have a really big target. with the brush hog. The brush hog can handle a lot higher grass, a lot more without throwing any uh, any belts. And with stuff around the house we do with the finish mower. Uh, it takes a while, it takes a couple hours, more than two hours. I haven't done the whole field and timed it yet, uh, but if I had to guess I'd say maybe four hours, five hours to do the field and the hillside's another couple hours. It's about a half day job. Some of you might be wondering, why not just put some livestock up in this field? Why not let the cows up here and let them eat all this grass? That would be great to have livestock up here eating grass, but the livestock that we own would in no way take care of this entire field. It would get overgrown too fast. And if you don't cut your field, a lot of weeds will come up and go to seed, and then you'll have more and more weeds every year. And uh, you wind up, your field will wind up turning into a forest. On the other side of the fence, there are lots of livestock. Kay's aunts have sheep, goats, horses, and they do all the mowing on that side, the animals. soil to see which side of the fence has better soil. The side that's been mowed each year or the side that has had animals. If you mow and you chop and drop like we do with this brush hog, it actually leaves lots of nutrients right here in the soil. So it wouldn't be a bad thing. Maybe one of these days we'll send a soil test off from either side and get the results. Put your guess in the comments below. What do you think would look better after probably a decade of either mowing or livestock? experience with large equipment. I ran excavators and dozers and skid loaders for years. Uh, so with big equipment comes some basic common sense rules. You kind of know how to operate. But that doesn't mean you don't get into trouble. Not too long ago I was mowing the hillside and uh, the hillsides are very steep. You have to make sure you're in four-wheel drive when you take it down the hill, four-wheel low. And uh, the, 
problem is at the bottom of the hill it flattens out and it gets to a paved road so you have to kick it back into two wheels so you don't break the mower. So you kick it into four wheel, kick it into two wheel, kick it into four wheel, kick it into two wheel, back and forth, back and forth. Well, in one of those back and forth, back and forths, I got distracted and I forgot to kick it into four wheel. Headed down the hill, tractor started picking up speed. So I tried to gun it, pick up speed with it, keep it going straight. But I, I lost traction and the whole thing started to spin. I tried pumping the brakes, that didn't work. I wound up doing a 360 in this giant tractor. That was scary. <laughs> Turns out I was only in two-wheel drive. If I had been in four-wheel and I had just kept, you know, moving forward with the wheels, it wouldn't have been a problem at all. But apparently a lot of people make that mistake because every family member told me a story about when they had done it. And uh, I found out, all right, it's part of the learning curve. Going down the hill once, not in four-wheel, you won't do it again. <laughs> I am notoriously known for not enjoying lawn work, mowing the lawn, any sort of lawn maintenance. One of the reasons we started looking into getting livestock was so they could do this kind of job for me so I wouldn't have to do it. Well, a property this big, you would need so many livestock like they have on the other side. That's way past a homestead level. That's where you get into really a farm level, farm business. And while that is a good option for some, uh, for our lifestyle, I cannot run this YouTube channel uh, which is my primary business and still have enough time to work that many livestock. So for us, mowing is the right solution for this side of the field. While we will use this side of the field for feeding livestock, when they can't keep up with certain sections coming out in the mower, uh, it's air conditioned. I'm sweating profusely right now because I turned the air conditioner off because it's too loud. Mess up the volume on my uh, talking here. But normally the air conditioner is on, I have my headphones in, I'm listening to my favorite podcasts, and uh, I'm just enjoying time outside in the quiet. I'm sick today, I can't do a lot physically, but sitting in the tractor for a couple hours, just bouncing around, something I can handle while I'm sick, I get to get some work done, and it's kind of relaxing. Speaking of podcasts, other than the Home Study Podcast, of course, which will return, we've had lots of questions. Uh, right now we have no space to record a podcast, there's no quiet studio space, but the Home Study Podcast will return uh, once we move into the big house, hopefully this winter. Uh, what's your favorite podcast to listen to? I of course like the Survival Podcast with Jack Spearco, that's a great one. Uh, I also enjoy listening to Science Verses, that's a podcast from Gimlet. And once in a while I'll listen to a podcast about either business, money, or YouTube, depending on what I'm in the mood for. Oh, and I like the Hunting Publix podcast about hunting, that's a good one. Most of the time it's either Hunting Public, Jack Spearco, or Science Versus. Comment below your top three favorite podcasts, maybe we can find some good new ones if we all share favorite podcasts. And of course, I'll link to the Homesteady podcast below. You can go check out our podcast. There's like 50 or 60 episodes. Good for jobs like this, where you got a long time and you can't look at a YouTube video, but you want to be entertained. thinking right now, why not hay this field? There's so much material here available for doing hay, uh, why not hay the field? The tractor is only one piece of the puzzle when it comes to doing hay. Hay equipment is very expensive to get started with. Uh, yes, you can find used equipment for less money, but still you can spend ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars even in used equipment getting into hay equipment. We have the tractor, we have the grass growing, but I don't have an extra thirty thousand, twenty, even ten thousand dollars to spend on haying equipment myself. And then when you buy the equipment, you gotta do hay. And hay is one of those jobs that the weather commands your schedule. Make hay while the sun shines. You have to make your hay in the sunshine. If it's been raining a lot, you gotta work around the rain. 
Uh, we have a pretty full lifestyle as far as our homestead goes and then running the YouTube channel, the business off of it. And so I would not be able to fit in making hay myself. And you're thinking, well, this is such a waste. We're just cutting the grass and uh, not being used. Well, like I said, cutting the grass is good for the soil. If you leave the cuttings, it will keep feeding the, the grass out here. We do feed Ladybug, Luna, and we will bring more livestock up here in the future. So it's not a waste. And then, as far as haying goes, we have been talking with our hay farmer, the one who you saw in the hay video we shared a few videos ago, about next year having him come out here with his hay equipment and uh, splitting the field 50-50. He gets to take 50% of the bales back to sell and we get to keep 50 bales. We don't have to have any hay equipment. We don't have to do any work for haying. We just provide the field with the grass. To me, that is a win-win. We don't need as much hay as this field would produce. Uh, we found out how much hay it would produce. My father-in-law, back when he was a kid, used to help his grandfather hay the field. He told me how many bales, which off the top of my head I cannot recall. But uh, I could look it up if anybody wanted to know. And uh, so maybe next year we'll have the farmer come out. We're gonna talk to him in the springtime, plan it, and see if we couldn't actually get some hay from it. Because it would be really nice to get the hay we need from the property we own without doing any of the work for it, uh, without buying any of the equipment, just splitting it with a farmer. I love that idea. All right, it's getting way too hot to keep talking. I gotta turn this AC back on. As you can see, I'm dripping here. In tomorrow's episode of Homesteady, it's my daughter's first time ever up in a tree stand, and it turns out to be a pretty awesome set. We get covered up in deer. Do we get fresh venison in the freezer? Find out in tomorrow's episode of Homesteady. If you like our show, you can help us produce this show without spending a penny extra by doing all your Amazon shopping through this link right below. Just click on it. Or before you go to Amazon, type in www.amsteady.com in the URL bar. It will forward you to Amazon. We'll get a bonus for sending you there. It is a huge help to producing this show. We thank you so much for doing it.